One, this is John B, AKA Smooth Chocolate here. Well, that day is today, also my birthday. <laughs> but I also do another Goosebumps read, and this one's gonna be, like I promised to everyone, How to Kill a Monster. Look at that cover, it's so freaking scary looking, but good artwork too. And before we begin, we're gonna read the back of the book to see what we're about to walk into with this creepy story. Home Alone, with a monster? Gretchen and her stepbrother Clark hate staying at the grandparents' house. Grandpa Eddie is totally deaf, and Grandma Rose is obsessed with baking. Plus, they live right in the middle of a dark, muddy swamp. Things can get any worse, right? Wrong. Because there's something really weird about Grandma and Grandpa's house. Something odd about that room upstairs, the one that's locked. The one with the strange noises coming from it. Strange, growling noises. <sighs> Reader beware, or in your case, listener beware, you're in for a scare. Chapter 1 Why do we have to go there? I went up in the back seat of the car. Why? Gretchen, I've told you three times why, Dad sighed. Your mother and I have to go to Atlanta for work. I know that, I replied, leaning over the front seat. But why can't we go with you? Why do we have to stay at Grandma and Grandpa? Because we said so, Mom and Dad declared together. Because we said so. Once they said those deadly words, there was no use arguing. I slumped down in my seat. Mom and Dad have some kind of work emergency in Atlanta. They got the call this morning. It's not fair, I thought. They get to visit a cool city like Atlanta, and Clark, my stepbrother, and I have to go to Mudtown. Mudtown. Well, it's not really called Mudtown, but it should be. Because it's a swamp. Grandma Rose and Grandpa Eddie live in southern Georgia, in a swamp. Can you believe it? A swamp. I sit out the car window. We've been riding on highways all day. Now we were driving on a narrow road through the swamp. It was late afternoon, and the cypress trees began to cast long shadows over the marshy grass. I stuck my head out the window. A blast of hot, humid air hit my face. I ducked back in, excuse me, I ducked back in and turned to Clark. His nose was buried in a comic book. Clark is 12, like me. He's much shorter than I am, much shorter. And he has curly brown hair, brown eyes, and tons of freckles. He looks exactly like mom. I'm kind of tall for my age. I have long, straight blonde hair and green eyes. I look like dad. My parents divorced when I turned two years old. The same thing happened to Clark. My dad and his mom married each other right after our third birthdays, and we all moved into a new house together. I like my stepmother, and Clark and I get along okay, I guess. We have to be jerks sometimes. Even my friends say so. But I think the brothers act like jerks too. I stared at Clark, watched him read. His glasses slid down his nose. He pushed him up. Clark, I started, shh. He waved his hand at me. I meant the good part. Clark loves comic books, scary ones. But he's not brave, so he's always terrified by the time he finishes. I glanced out the window again. I stared at the trees, at the branches, all draped in long gray webs. They dangled from every tree, curtains of gray. They made the swamp look really gloomy. Mom told me about the gray webs when we were packing this morning. She knows a lot about swamps. She thinks swamps are pretty, in a spooky sort of way. Mom said the gray webs were actually a swamp plant that grew right on the trees. A plant that grows on a plant? Weird, I thought. Definitely weird. Almost as weird as Grandma and Grandpa. Dad, how come Grandma and Grandpa never visit us? I asked. We have since when we were four. Well, they're a little strange. Dad peered at me through the rearview mirror. They don't like to travel, they almost never leave their house, and they live so far back in the swamp it's very hard to visit them. Oh wow, I said, a soup over with two strange old hermits. Smelly strange old hermits, Clark mumbled, glancing up from his comic. Clark! Gretchen! Mom scolded. Don't talk about your grandparents like that way. They're not my grandparents, they're hers, Clark jerked said toward me, and they do smell. I can still remember it. I punched myself over in the arm. But he was right. 
Grandma and Grandpa did smell a combination of mildew and mothballs. I sank deep into my seat and let out a loud yawn. It seemed as if we had been riding in the car for weeks, and it was really crowded back there, with me, Clark, and Charlie kind of squished together. Charlie's our dog, a golden retriever. I pushed Charlie out of the way and stretched out. Quit shoving a bar to me, Clark complained. His combo dropped to the floor. Sit still, Gretchen, Mom muttered. I knew we should have boarded Charlie. I tried to find a kennel for him, Dad said, but no one could take him at the last minute. Clark pushed Charlie off his lap and reached down for his comic, but I grabbed it first. Oh, brother, I moaned when I read the title. Creatures from the Muck? How can you read this garbage? It's not garbage, Clark shot back. It's really cool. There are no stupid nature magazines you read. What's it about? I asked, flipping through the pages. It's about some totally gross monsters, half human, half beast. They set traps to catch people, then they hide under the mud, near the surface, Clark explained. He grabbed the comic book from my hand. Then what happens? I asked. They wait. They wait as long as it takes for the humans to fall in their traps. Clark's voice started to quiver. Then they force them deep into the swamp and make them their slaves. Clark shuddered. He glanced out the window, out at the eerie cypress trees with their long beards of gray. It was growing dark now. The tree's shadow shifted over the tall grass. Clark lowered himself in his seat. He has a wild imagination. He really believes himself he reads. Then he gets scared, like now. Did he do anything else? I asked. I wanted Clark to tell me more. He was really scaring himself good. Well, at night, the monsters rise up from the mud, he went on, sliding down to see some more. And they drag kids from their beds. They drag them into the swamp. They drag them down into the mud. No one ever sees the kids again, ever. Clark was totally freaked now. There really are creatures like that in the swamp, a red bottom of school. I lied. Horrible monsters, half alligator, half human, covered with mud, with spiky scales underneath, hidden. If you just brush against one, the scales rip the flesh right off your bones. Gretchen, stop, Mom warned. Clark hugged Charlie close to him. Hey, Clark, pointed out the window to an old narrow bridge up ahead. Its wooden planks sagged, looked ready to crumble. I bet a swamp monster is waiting for us under that bridge. Clark gazed out the window at the bridge. He hugged Charlie closer to him. Dad began steering the car over the wooden planks. They rumbled and groaned under the weight. I held my breath as we slowly rolled across. This bridge can't hold us, I thought. No way. Dad drove very, very slowly. It seemed to take forever to ride across. Clark clung to Charlie. He kept his eyes out the window, glued to the bridge. When we finally neared the end, I let out a long whoosh of air, and then I gasped as a deafening explosion rocked the car. No! Clark and I both screamed as the car swerved wildly, skidded out of control. It crashed into the side of the old bridge, plowed right through the old wood. We, we're going down, Dad cried. I shut my eyes as we plunged into the swamp. Chapter 2, next time folks.